A very good morning to you, uh, all of you. Uh, blessed Easter. It's wonderful to be gathered together in the Lord's house on this very wonderful morning when we can remember the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we prepare our hearts for the worship and the Word of God, let's just go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Let's just quieten our hearts and let's just turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather together this morning, Father, I pray you will quieten our hearts, that you make each one of us even more sensitive to what you are speaking to us today, Lord. Through the worship, through the Word of God, speak to us in a special way, Lord. Father, we want to thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for his death on the cross, and for his wonderful resurrection through which we are saved, Lord, through which we are reconciled with you. And Father, even as we recall this momentous occasion, Lord, let it be real in our lives day by day, Lord, and help us, Lord, to build on that reconciliation, Lord, to strengthen our walk with you and our relationship with you, Lord. So, Father, I just pray, O oh Lord, that you will speak to us in a special way, that you will meet us in a special way this morning, Lord. So we commit this morning to you, we commit each other to you, Lord. And, Lord, we just look to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's just join together, rise up, and let the choir lead us in this worship song, The Heavens Are Telling. Indeed, the heavens are telling of His great resurrection.
The heavens are telling the glory of God. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hear the words from the gospel, Matthew chapter 28. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. The angel said to the women, he is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory now and forever. In your great mercy, you have given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, from the dead. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Together, blessed be God forever. Risen Lord Jesus, as Mary Magdalene met you in the garden on the morning of your resurrection, so may we meet you today and every day. Speak to us as you spoke to her. Reveal yourself as the living Lord. Renew our hope and kindle our joy and send us to share the good news with others. Amen. Together, let's just turn to the Lord. Let's sit or kneel as we can. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice, evil, and confess our sins with a sincere and true heart. Let's just turn to the Lord and recall the things that we may have done which may have hurt Him. Remembering that He took all our sins and nailed it to the cross. Together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. On this resurrection morning, we give thanks to the Lord for his grace and the victory we have in Jesus and his forgiveness. So receive the Lord, for he's full of mercy, grace, and forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God's forgiven people, let's rise together and say the Gloria in Excelsis with a special meaning today in Resurrection Sunday. Together, glory, glory to God, God in the highest. highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, 
only, only son, son of, the, of the, father. the Father. Lord, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's now worship the Lord together, led by our sister Doreen. Good morning, everyone. Behold, the Lamb has risen. Because He has risen, He is our living hope. And we can always count on Him for tomorrow. The song Walked across the pages of time He who made every living thing Behold Him He who heard humanity's cry Left His throne to wake as a child He became like the least of us Behold
Hallelujah. His death has set us free. Amen. Amen. Let us together as the church pray the collect for Easter day. Together. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Please be seated as our sister Lyra brings to you the first reading. The first reading is taken from the Old Testament, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. Isaiah 11, verses 1 to 10. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what eyes, sorry, he shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion, and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, right, very good morning. morning. I know some of you all look at me very strangely this morning, wondering why I'm dressed the way I'm dressed. No, I'm not the new vicar. <laughs> yeah, we all love the, the current vicar. Yeah. This morning, you are going to witness three very interesting characters that were in the Bible and who were present when our Lord Jesus hung on the cross. And they were also present through all the chaos, all the confusion that was going on. And so you will find out in a short while why I am dressed the way I am dressed. So I pray that this morning the Holy Spirit will speak to each one of you as we remember the great love of our Lord Jesus when he went to the cross for each of us. I'd like to invite you to join me in prayer before we begin the short drama. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, Lord, that you are risen. You are living. Lord, you hear us. You know us. And so this morning, Father, I pray by your Spirit, Lord, that you will be with us, Lord, 
to unpack the beauty, the love, and the mercy that is from your heart of what you did for each one of us, Lord, when your son Jesus Christ went to the cross. And so, Father, we pray this morning, you be glorified. All majesty, all glory, all honour goes to you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The first, the first reading. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. As a Roman centurion, I have always been tasked to look after all the crucifixions that take place. Nothing is different from every crucifixion. The orders are given, I bring the prisoner there, he gets flogged, he gets whipped, and then he's brought, dragged in pain, flesh torn to the cross. And my men will do what they're tasked to do, and that is to nail the prisoner to the cross. But that day was the most remarkable crucifixion I have ever, ever witnessed. This man, I watched him from the very beginning when he was brought before Pilate, my boss, and he was told of the crime that he did. Not one word did he say. He just stood there and the accusations were flying at him. And then he was told that he would receive lashings. And so I stood there bewildered and wondering what was going on. This man didn't look any sort like a criminal. Well, anyway, what happened next was very, very, very interesting. We led him to the place that he was going to be crucified. And when he was raised on the cross, suddenly the whole sky turned dark. It turned so dark that you would think it was night. And simultaneously, the ground shook. An earthquake took place. We hear him shout these words so loudly that the hairs on my back stood. And my soldiers, my men, they were looking at me in confusion. People were scurrying all over the place. I just stood there bewildered. I have been to every crucifixion, but here I see one that is so, so wild. Words cannot describe what I saw. But here 
was a very, very different crucifixion. And then, there were bodies that were coming out of the tomb. All I could do was stand there and tremble in awe. And when I looked at this man's face on that cross, and seeing all that took place around me, all I could say was, truly, He was the Son of God. Second reading. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took His garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also His tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture, which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Now, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. You know, I'm one of the most favorite of all the disciples. My name is John, and I'm so privileged that he loves me so much. But you know, when he got arrested at the garden, oh boy, my love for him flew away. I ran because I was so afraid of, of, of what they were doing to, 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 to Jesus, my Lord. They arrested him. Yeah, and, and we all just ran like, like cockroaches, you know, when lights come on. And so anyway, I told myself, I said, if Jesus loves me so much, I need, to, I need to be there where he's going to be at, which is at the crucifixion, but how am I going to bring myself there? Because people are going to recognize me and, and, and they're going to say, he was with that guy. And I, I, I don't want to get caught... I'm such a scaredy cat. But anyway, I said, I have to be there. And so what I did was I spoke to his mother, Mary. And I said, can I come along with you and the other women? And she just looked at me. She bowed her head and she says, come, let's go. And so I just stayed behind them and made sure they walked in front of me and get as close as we could to the cross. And oh my Lord... What I saw just hurt me so badly. There is my Lord hanging on the cross, body ripped, flesh torn. I was trembling in fear that I get spotted by the authorities, but also at the same time I felt so much pain that was seen on the cross. I could just see how much pain he was going through. 
And then suddenly, he catches my eyes. It's like he eyeballed me. And then he turned and he looked to his mother. And here I am. I'm just hiding next to her. And he says, strangest thing. He says, woman, behold your son. And then he looks at me. And he says, son, behold your mother. I was in shock. What did he mean by that? I guess he wanted me to look after his mother. But can you imagine? He was up there in pain, yet he could say what he said. Oh, I was so sad. And I remember taking Mary home. And then with the disciples, we were in the room. We were just resting, confused, frightened. And suddenly there was this knock on the door. And so Peter goes and opens the door. And so I'm just behind Peter and I'm just watching what's going on. And Mary Magdalene had to come. And I hear her say, the Lord is not there. Before I can say anything, Peter bolts out of the house. He runs. But you know what? I'm faster than he is. So I know I can catch up with him. And so I ran after him. And true enough, I overtook him. I just ran and ran and ran. I looked back. Oh, he was behind me, catching my dust as I ran. And when I got to the tomb, I saw the stone had been rolled away. But I was too frightened to go inside. And Peter came boom, right in. He ran in. He did not stop. He went in. And he looked. And I saw him looking in. And I was like, I got to be inside. I need to see what's going on. And so I decided to step in. Wow. He was not there. It was just his grave clothes and the cloth that was supposed to be on his face lying there. And I had this silly smile on my face. I somehow knew in my heart all that he used to teach us was coming to pass. And I believed. The third reading. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, with fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and handed the net uh, and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty three of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the, none of the disciples that asked him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the, the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Let 
And so, yes, I'm supposed to be Peter, the most daring of all, the leader of all the disciples, the big guy, the main man, right? The one who took out the sword and chopped off the guy's ear. And even, even, even I said, Lord, wherever you go, I'll go with you. It was not to be. I betrayed my Lord. Three times, he said, before the rooster crows, I will betray him. And I did. And I did. And when I saw him get arrested, and he was led away, I tried my best to follow him. But I couldn't. Because I was too afraid. I was afraid that I'd be found out. Wherever I went, people recognized me. They called out to me, weren't you with that Jesus? So much for being a brave guy, so much for being a leader of the disciples. I remember watching everything and then when I heard the rooster crow, my heart just sank. I remember I had cold sweat. And I walked away crying my heart out because of what I did to my Lord. So what else could I do? My Lord's gone. The disciples were asking me, what shall we do now, Peter? What shall we do now? Well, I'm going fishing because that's not the only thing I know what to do. So a few of them wanted to follow me and they went with me. You know, as I held the nets and as I cast the nets over the, the boat, my memories were flooding of all the times I was with Jesus. It just came back over and over again. And as I'm pulling the net up, the net's empty and I remember the Lord telling us, cast it on the other side. And as I was thinking about it, I hear this voice from the shore. We weren't very far away. Children, have you any fish? And the rest just answered and told that man. And so suddenly John looks at me and says, the man says, cast on the other side. All right, so I did that. And suddenly the, the net was just filled with the fish. And John exclaims, it's the Lord. And me being Peter, right? The impulsive one, what do I do? Instead of waiting for the boat to reach the shore, I jump in. Why? Because I was excited. I jumped in and I swam as fast as I could to the front, to the beach. I got onto the shore. It was the Lord. But I was trembling. And shortly after that, the rest came with me. And Jesus, the Lord, invited us to sit down. He had prepared food for us. And none of us dare open our mouths because we were so afraid. But here He was. We could feel His love radiating to us. He was feeding us. He made us all sit down and we all looked at each other like who's going to open their mouth first? Who's going to say something? It was such a special moment for all of us. I think we were all awestruck The here was our Lord Jesus just sitting there with us. And for the rest of the evening, I was so, so privileged to spend my time with my Lord Jesus even after what I had done to Him. He was there with us. The end.
Yeah, so it is Peter has to wear his glasses, otherwise he can't see. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, what you have just witnessed, friends, visitors, what you've just witnessed is a portrayal of three very distinguished characters that are mentioned in the New Testament. The Roman centurion who was stationed at the cross, and he was presumably the one that oversaw the crucifixion that day. And of course, we had the Apostle John and the Apostle Peter. Three very distinct accounts. Three different men. Two, yeah, you can say they're the same because they are the disciples, yeah? Because they were with Jesus. And then, of course, there's this Roman centurion who was not part of that group. He was not, what I would say, part of the house of uh, faith, the household of faith. He was a pagan, believed to be a pagan. But yeah, he stood there and he saw these supernatural things that were happening. He saw the dark, that the clouds go, I mean, the sky go dark. Have you ever experienced something like that? Have you seen it? like the rain's coming, right? And then suddenly there's this dark, dark clouds hanging over. And so he stood there, he saw darkness come upon the earth. He felt the earth shake and move. And then the word says that tombs were actually open. All right, tombs were actually open. In verse 52 of Matthew 27, the tombs also were open and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. He saw all this. He saw all this happening. You know, as I was preparing for this kid, trembling in fear, you know, on my knees every day, you know, talking to Vicar off and on, you know, like, wow, I'm so, I'm so nervous, I'm so nervous, you know. And I was praying, God, 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 please help me to pull this off, to glorify you, you know, to, to give you all the credit. And then the Lord brought me to this very, very interesting verse, which was verse 45 of this passage. Now from the sixth hour, Matthew 27, right? From the, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. I was like, God, why are you showing me this verse 4? It's resurrection, right? We're supposed to be rejoicing and celebrating the Lord's resurrection. The tomb is empty. Kosong. <laughs> no one inside there. But then the Lord showed me this very, very powerful picture of verse 45. When darkness came over the land, it was as if the gates of hell, the devil and all his foes were gathering over the crucifixion site and rejoicing. Yes, we've put the Son of God to death. They gathered. They looked down. They were cheering in the sky. Darkness. They were cheering, yes, we have sent the Son of God to the cross, to His death. And I was like, wow. What a revelation. So darkness thought they had the final say. They thought when they saw Christ on the cross, yes, it's over, it's done with. We have won. But no, we all know what happened. We know the story. We know that also at the same time, when darkness came over the earth, that was a physical appearance, right? People could see the centurion saw the darkness. But you know that that darkness also represented the most painful part for Jesus, which was his spiritual separation from God. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? But then, in verse 50, we read about Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. He cried out. In the other Gospels, we read, it is finished, he says. It is finished. It is done. And so darkness thought that they had won. That the enemy thought they won. But no, Christ won. It's finished. He has done it. The curtain in the temple was torn from top to bottom. Top to bottom. You know what that represents? The curtain in the temple represents Jesus' body split. 
torn, shredded, so that we can have access to the Father. Think about it. The beautiful curtain that they all revered in the temple was now torn from top to bottom. And by gosh, the height of that temple, no man could have climbed that curtain and tried to tear it. No way. But it was done. It was finished. So, so many things were happening for the centurion. He saw all this and he remarked, truly, he was the son of God. Sorry, wrong context. If somebody should have told the centurion, truly, he is the son of God. Not was the son of God. He is and will always be the son of God. And then, of course, we have John. John being witness there to all that took place. And then Jesus says the most remarkable thing. He talks to his mother. He talks to John. Even at his pain, he cared for his mother. He cared for John. Maybe, and yes, it was customary for the Jewish men to take care of the women in their household. But even in such pain, Jesus demonstrated so much love for his mother. He demonstrated so much love still at the cross. And we know from, other God, from the other passages of scriptures that when Jesus was on the cross, he asked God the Father to forgive the soldiers who were gambling. And he asked God to forgive. Forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. In great pain, he was on the cross praying, interceding. In great pain, he is here concerned about his mother. And you know, I want you for a moment to just imagine right now that you are Peter. Just for a moment. Imagine you are Peter. Can you imagine rejecting the Son of God? I do not know who He is. No, you got me wrong. I'm not that guy. No, I have no clue what you're talking about. Who's this Jesus? Who's this Yeshua? I don't know who He is. Then, How you feel? Yeah, now we laugh. But oh my goodness. Can you imagine how Peter felt? And then when he hears that there is this man on the shore that seems to be Jesus, he jumps out of the boat and he swims all the way to the shore. And he meets Jesus there. And for the rest of the passage, of John, we read that Jesus sat down with him and Jesus restored him three times. This is the same man that said, no, I do not know him. Three times. How many of us have been in that situation before? In your office? In your school? When somebody comes up to you, why are you wearing a cross? You must be a Christian. Uh, no fashion. How many of you all are afraid to talk about your faith? This man, whom we call our Lord Jesus Christ, publicly showed his love on the cross. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, visitors and guests, we celebrate that the tomb is empty. We celebrate that darkness thought they won, but they were dispelled. We celebrate that the gospel is for every single human being on planet Earth. It is for you, it is for me. Maybe you are sitting right now where you are and you probably had a pretty challenging time, either some time ago or recently, and maybe you turn to people and you, you sort of put God aside, say, no, maybe I can turn to God later as my last resort, or maybe you turn to God as your last resort. Peter probably thought he was finished. Peter probably thought his life is over because he refused, he denied the son of the living God. But yet Jesus still restored him. In fact, if we read scripture, we never, never see Jesus say to Peter, hey, 
You remember or not? What I told you three times. Don't come and tell me I told you so. Did Jesus do that? No. Jesus didn't even say, Peter, because you did this, 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 you can forget about your eternal life. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus still loved him. Like how he loves you, 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 and you. I'd like to ask you to close your eyes and invite the worship team. I, I, I know there are some people in this sanctuary right now. I know. I just sense it in my spirit. I'm not going to embarrass you, but I know there are some people in this sanctuary right now who have been struggling with your faith journey. Close your eyes. I want everybody to close your eyes. I don't want you to look at me. You just close your eyes. Just close your eyes, please. Let the Holy Spirit do what He needs to do. I do believe there are some people in this room right now who have been having a challenge, a great challenge, but you have put God aside. You've put God aside. You're trying to figure things out on your own. I say to you now, you don't have to do that. You can come to the Father. You can come to the Father. And there are some of you all here who probably have been delaying your restoration and your reconciliation back to God. Now is the time, dear friends, now is the time to let God show you how much He loves you. He's come not to condemn you, but to save you. And so just join my hearts, join your hearts together as I pray for you all right now. If there are any one of you out there right now who feel that you need to come back to God the Father, I'd like you to just gently raise your hand up slowly. Just gently raise your hand up slowly. I'll acknowledge you. You just put your hand down and then we'll pray. Thank you. Put your hand down. Thank you. Lord, you see the hands that have raised their hands up. They want to come back to the Father. They have been out there in the wilderness. Oh Lord, I pray, Lord, you will touch each and every one of them who have raised their hands up. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here who maybe this is the first time you're hearing this message and you want to give your life to Jesus? Or maybe you have given your life to Jesus but you've fallen away. But you're hearing a voice in your heart pulling you, churning you, asking you to come back. If that is, the, if that is you, just gently raise your right hand up so I can see you and I want to pray for you. All right, thank you. Heavenly Father, I want to pray and give you thanks, Lord, for everyone here this morning. Father, I pray, Lord, that what you have done on the cross, Lord, is truly, Lord, something where all of us can go on our knees for and give you thanks. Lord, you have reconciled us back to God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I pray, Lord, this morning that everyone here in this sanctuary, Lord, will have a fresh revelation of who you are, of how much love you have for each one of us as we rejoice and celebrate the empty tomb. We rejoice and we celebrate the finished work of Jesus Christ we rejoice and we celebrate of your great love for each one of us. So Lord, thank you, Lord, for the demonstration that you have given us through your restoration, Lord, of Peter and the disciples, Lord. When, Lord, you commanded them and you commanded all of us, Lord, to go out and make disciples of all nations. So thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, please rise and join.
the worship team as we sing a very beautiful and very meaningful, lovely worship song called Forever. Focus on the words of the song and I pray that the song will also minister to each one of you. Amen.
Amen. Indeed, Jesus is alive. And even as we have been reminded of the foundation of our faith, let's say together the Nicene Creed to remind ourselves of our faith. Together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from, from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we go through the announcement. But before I go through the announcement, uh, may I know anyone here for the first time? Any visitor here for the first time? Or someone who's been back after a long time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, we welcome all of you. And uh, just to let you know also, today we have breakfast fellowship after service. So we hope to continue the fellowship with each one of you. So join us for breakfast. I have one other announcement on the AGM. Uh, so next Sunday is our AGM Sunday. Uh, nine o'clock is a combined service. So please be early because the church will be very crowded. All three congregations will be here together. Uh, we will then adjourn to the parish hall for a light breakfast uh, and brunch uh, before the AGM at 11 a.m. So, uh, hope to see all of you, especially those of you who are on the electoral row, uh, AGM next Sunday. That's all the announcement I have. Uh, maybe, may I invite Shen Xiao to lead us in a word of prayer? There's a, vid there's a video. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yep. My bad. Uh, before we have our intercession, uh, we have a message from our bishop, Titus Chung, uh, and the message will now be played. Sisters in Christ, blessed Resurrection Sunday. Indeed, as believers, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, for He conquered death and redeemed us from our sins, giving us new life in Christ. We should celebrate His resurrection, not just today, but all the days of our lives. Jesus' resurrection reveals our final destiny, that is, eternal life in God's glory. As His disciples, I am sure we look forward to the glorious life in the new heaven and new earth. But until that day comes, God wants us to live out this new life here on earth as a foretaste of eternal life. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 13 talks about attaining the whole measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. One aspect of fullness of life in Christ is to live out the fullness of love Christ. We are called to love God and love our neighbour. 
if we love God, we will love our neighbor. And we cannot love our neighbor if we do not first love God. In the Gospel accounts, Jesus' resurrection, the most important event in human history, is followed by his giving us the Great Commission. Our risen Lord commissions us to go and make disciples of all nations. A disciple of Christ will naturally produce disciples. For when we live out the love of God, those around us will see Jesus in us and be drawn towards Him. Now that life is fully restored to normalcy, let us seize every opportunity to share the gospel to everyone who has yet to know Him and make disciples wherever God has placed us. May the Lord be with us. Have a blessed Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's now kneel or sit as we can and Brother Sheng Chiao will come and lead us in intercession. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this blessed Easter Sunday, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude and joy for the gift of salvation that you have given us through the death and resurrection of your Son. Salvation through his death on the cross, conquering our sin. Salvation through his resurrection, giving us the promise of eternal life for all who believe and trust in him. All this grace and love poured out on us despite our unworthiness and sinfulness. As we celebrate this day, we ask that you renew our faith and hope in you. Fill our hearts and minds with the knowledge of you and bring us closer to you. Help us to live as your children, shining your light in a world that often seems dark and hopeless. We pray for all those who are struggling, lonely, or hurting on this day, and ask for your presence and comfort to surround them, that they may feel the hope and new life that comes with the Easter message. We pray for this world, which is filled with such pain and suffering, especially those caused by armed conflicts. Lord, bring healing and reconciliation to all those who are divided by hatred, violence, and injustice. May the church universal as your ambassadors of Christ be agents of love and peace in the world. We pray for world leaders that they may be guided by your wisdom and seek to serve the common good, making decisions that honor you and promote justice, peace, and righteousness. Lord, we lift up to you our young children who are growing up in a culture that is often hostile to the gospel. Protect them from the lies and temptations of this world and give them the strength to stand firm in their faith, even when it is hard, and help them to trust in your promises. Lord, we continue to pray for parents and close family members who have yet to know the saving grace of Jesus. Your word tells us in 1 Timothy that you desire all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And so we bring them before you in prayer, asking that you open up their hearts and minds to the truth of your word. Help them to see the beauty and power of your love and to understand your sacrifice made for all on the cross. Father, we welcome your spirit and your wisdom to incoming leaders as we conduct our AGM next week. With this fresh start, we look for your guidance. 
always reminded in the first Corinthians that you, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Help us to understand that this doesn't mean that different ideas and views are not offered and debated, but that the unity of purpose is one, to participate in Christ's mission on earth, to seek and save the lost. Finally, we pray for ourselves that we may be faithful disciples of your Son. Help us to follow his example of love, service, and sacrifice. May we be witnesses to your love and truth, and may we bring others closer to you by our words and actions. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we stand together as we share the peace with one another? The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. We share the peace with one another.